Hi, I'm in the boot of my husband's car with a giant blue egg and I am really nervous about a few things. I have upcoming next month, I have my second progression review, I have to sit a viva where experts, um, professors will quiz me about the work that I've been doing so far at a philosophical and methodological level and I've been told that I've chosen um, people who are likely to, give me a, likely to give me a really good quizzing so I'm not expecting to have an easy ride of that and in advance of that I have to submit like a sort of mini thesis it's not very mini, it's about 35,000 words long and I've just rewritten a chapter of it in a really different way and the feedback on the chapter the way I'd written it the first time around was poor and I was told to go away and write it better and I haven't. I've gone away and written a totally different thing and if I've written another equally rubbish thing then my supervision on Wednesday is going to go really badly because I'll say why didn't you spend that time making the rubbish one better and then the blue egg thing so tomorrow I'm back in the field again and again on Tuesday, which means that I'll be working with people with profound intellectual and multiple disabilities. And my pitch with this research from the start has been that I want to do research with them, not on them or for them, but, you know, really literally with them. And there's lots of arguments that can be made that say, well, that's not possible because research is an intellectual pursuit and these people have a profound cognitive impairment, so they can't do intellectual pursuits. But I'm not looking at research as an intellectual pursuit. I'm looking at research as something which pushes forth the boundaries of knowledge or apprehends new meaning or generates new understanding. And I think those things are things that all people can do and so in in my sort of the philosophical maneuvers that I've been making in my work I've argued that in order to do research with people with profound intellectual and multiple disabilities it's necessary to find a space that we can occupy together so I, I think I did I talk in a different film about being with if I haven't I will do at some point <laughs> um, so that, that's what I'm trying to do is um, find these spaces of being with and the being with obviously is a proximal thing I, I need to literally physically be with the people that I'm hoping to do research with but it's not just a you know that I sit near somebody it's that I try and bring my being my consciousness myself to where their being their consciousness their self is and I've been working with two very different people, three people actually, but I've only managed it with two so far. Um, and then that the space of being with is very different. And I think when I had first imagined this work, I thought I would figure out where that space was. And then I'd, you know, a bit like when you learn your way to a new location, that doesn't that doesn't happen for me very often because I still get lost finding my way to local places. But I was imagining it like place and space. People use space and place interchangeably, but place is a geographical location and space can be geographical, but it is also a social phenomenon. So you don't necessarily have the space in the same place. And I think I've been thinking too much in terms of place. I've, I've been imagining that once I knew how to get somewhere, I would just get there again. And then and then once I knew how to get into that space, that's when I was going to introduce the research question. And the research question is about identity. But I have, I have been in that space like a couple of times or... Or maybe I sort of pass through it or it flickers there and it doesn't feel solid enough to introduce the question. And I'm also very worried about what other people think I'm doing because you can't, I'm not very good at 
describing it in person. I'm not particularly good at describing it on a video, but I'm a damn sight better on a video than I am in real life. And so it's, it's very hard for me to convey what it is I'm trying to do because all you see from the outside is the, the physical location stuff and not the, the being, which just sounds ridiculous if we try and explain it. But I think people understand it, especially people who um, love people with profound intellectual and multiple disabilities. I find when I describe it to them, they go, yeah, yeah. I get it. I get. I know exactly what you mean. Um, so I think it's a thing. Um, and I'd hoped. Yeah. I wonder what. I wonder if people just think I'm not doing anything, because I'm there with these people, and I'm. You know, a lot of times professionals are there to teach you something or to um, show you something or to try and. I'm literally just there to be with you, and to try and find where you are and where your being is. And so people watching me must be thinking, like, she's not doing anything with them. Um, what a waste of time. I don't know. Um, maybe they're not thinking any of these things and I'm just paranoid. But I, I do worry that people will look at what I'm doing and think it's nothing. Um, and I, I worry especially because if I were to... Um, not be able to, um, you know, imagine if somebody said, oh, you're not doing anything, we don't want you to come anymore. And then I wouldn't be able to do the research at all. So I'm really frightened of that. So tomorrow, <laughs> partly because I want to look like I'm doing something, but actually, I don't think I would have done it just for that. I realised I, it's very unlikely that I am going to be able to confidently find my way into that space and know it. It's more of a... It's like a... I used to live on a boat, so my my analogies are often sea-based. When um, a lighthouse says light scans around, there's a moment where it's on you. And so it's like, I'm there and I'm trying to be with this person, and I'm proximally there, and then there's a moment where you're like, yeah, I'm here. And so I hope to present the objects, the identity question, and I'll explain that somewhere else as well. If I go in with this giant perfect, <laughs> it's taken quite a bit to get it in the car um, tomorrow. Maybe I can be with and we can be with, and then the egg will be there, and I can ask a question about identity, which is the, you know, who am I when I'm with the egg? Because it is slightly different from who I am when I'm not with the egg, and who are we when we're with the egg? And yeah, maybe it will feel really good. Maybe I'll feel like we're beginning to do the research rather than this will be the shift between figuring out how to do the research and actually beginning to do it. So, so much rides on tomorrow. And I, if I don't break the egg, oily cut, I'm being, I'm being so careful with your egg, but it's, it's looking very fragile. Um, watch this space.